Okay, week five of fall anime. To be honest, it's been a little bit boring this this season. Not to say that the shows aren't bad or anything, just like the amount of different types of shows that pretty much do like similar things to stuff we've seen before just makes me feel a bit impatient just trying to get to the good parts. But overall, like the shows are still good. Basically, my top three so far have been uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, Majo, No Tabi Tabi, and uh, Higurashi When They Cry. But the other shows have their own flavor. I just need to finish the story. Just give me more, bro. So yeah, with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, so for Jujutsu Kaisen episode 6, Yuji goes inside of his body and he meets Sekina, who's sitting on the throne. So yeah, you know, you know Yuji, he doesn't even give a fuck that he's actually dead. He's like, give me my body back. So he starts fighting. Sekina's a lot stronger, but Yuji can keep up a little bit. Uh, the thing is, they don't really get anywhere, so Sekina offers him a proposal. If you're able to defeat me, then I'll give you your body back, full control, no strings attached. And then Yuji accepts, but then as he accepts, Sakuna just slashes his head off instantly in, in, in like inside his body realm. That was kind of strange, because like, damn, I thought Yuji just like straight up died, died right there. But then um, he actually wakes up in the real world just as he was about to be dissected, and he seems fine, no memory of anything bad. So this is just like red flags right here, like, Sakuna has like made a contract or something like maybe he's acting but this is not 100% Yuji so maybe we'll get to that later. Uh, after that Satoru tries to train him so he's like oh you're very strong but you need more control over your uh, jujutsu powers your curses. So there's basically cursed energy and cursed technique. So cursed energy is the raw energy so if you shoot it out it's kind of uncontrolled and just goes everywhere and cursed technique like channels that energy into um, something that's actually like easy to control. So it's like uh, cursed energy is basically like raw electricity and cursed technique is like a vacuum cleaner that uses the electricity to actually control it. So yeah, good uh, little bit of world building right there. Yuji has to kind of make his cursed technique stronger. And uh, the problem is that you're actually born with cursed energy. So like the ability to actually like use curses is just like something you're born with. You can't really train too much. It's like 80% um, natural skill. So then yeah, since Yuji is pretty low on the skill level, it's he gets kind of sad. But then after that, Satoru like has a new training technique to help him out. So this technique is to watch movies. And the reason for that is just because uh, movies have you channel your emotions a lot, like action or mystery, horror. Like, your emotions are just everywhere when you watch movies, so I assume that's his logic. To have a lot of emotional reactions and then have Yuji try to control his energy while watching the movie. And then there's like a teddy bear that punches him if he doesn't channel his energy correctly. So he's holding this teddy bear while he watches the movie and supposedly that'll help him get stronger. Uh, so after that, uh, Megumi and Novara are training for the tournament. Uh, Megumi actually wants to get a little stronger. He remembers Sakuna telling him, yo, you're pretty gifted with those Shikigami. So then yeah, Megumi actually finds a new Shikigami. I think he's looking in the underworld for a new monster. So maybe that'll be his next uh, power up. And then Novara is just getting yeeted by the panda. So yeah, sure. After that, we're in this restaurant, and this is probably like the most brutal part of the episode. So it's like the two guys we saw last episode that they wanted to kill Satoru. They're still discussing their plans at the restaurant. And then uh, there's like a spirit that's talking to the guy, and no one can see him, but he has like a volcano head. So when he gets excited, the temperature increases, and then if it increases too much, the people around him just combust, burn. All the people are just turning into these, these burned corpses. It's very brutal. <laughs> Like, um, they give us a good reason to hate this guy, so after that, they go hunt down Satoru, and Satoru is on his way somewhere, and then he leaves in the middle of the highway. The episode ends with him trying to fight the volcano head guy. So, exciting fight coming up. You know, Yuji will get stronger, Megumi and Nobara will get stronger, and- Okay, so for The Wandering Witch, episode 6. This was a nice episode, just, um, it's kind of like a- not an original, like, story point, but it was done pretty well. Like, this show is very nice to watch, it's just like the storytelling is immaculate and the art is very nice. Also, the characters are very cute and makes you want to cheer for them. So yeah, we start off with the Land of Truth Tellers. It's like a huge country surrounded by these castle walls and recently, it's called the Land of Truth Tellers because you cannot tell lies in here. It's because the king has like this magical sword that like makes an aura, so whenever you enter the town, 
you cannot tell a lie. So then um, it even works on witches, so that's how powerful it is. So Elena tests it out by like pulling out a mirror and saying, trying to say she's not beautiful, and she just can't. Uh, so I guess opinions are also considered lies, or maybe she's just unequivocally beautiful. But yeah, um, after that, she realizes that no one's really talking in this town. So it's just like toxic environment, kind of. Just You don't know if people hate each other. They're just like fed up. They don't want to risk talking. So yeah, this happens. There's a fight in the middle of the street. But then um, another witch comes in to help break up the fight. And who is it? It's Saya, the girl we met before, who is now a real witch. So her name is the Charcoal Witch. And it's very funny when Elena and Saya reunites because Saya cannot lie. She's just saying how much she wants to marry Elena, how much she loves Elena, how she asked her teacher to name her the Charcoal Witch because it's similar to the Ashen Witch so they can match names. Um, you know, they're they're in lesbians together, but uh, Elena does not uh, reciprocate. So Saya's purpose in this town is she was called by another witch and it's this homeless looking witch. Her name is Ahimia and she lost her voice. So she talks in a... Uh, writing on paper also another plot point is that you can't lie in writing so if you're like advertising a store or something like you cannot even lie when you write down the signs so then ahimia it's revealed that she lost her power and her voice when she actually made the sword that stopped people from lying so she worked for the kingdom before and then the king had like a bunch of snitches around him so he wanted ahimia the castle witch to create a spell to just stop people from lying and then yeah she used all her power because she loves the king she lost all her power basically because it's all channeled in the sword and her voice was also sacrificed and then after that she got kicked out of the palace because she's out of power she's kind of useless so she gave the king what he wanted and then he she just got kicked out and now is homeless so then yeah her mission for elena and saya is to just destroy the sword so she can get her power back since her power is stored inside the sword. So yeah, all three witches make a plan. They go t into the palace. They get to sneak in because make a loophole in the truth telling clause where if you write down like single sentences on one page and then just like make a next page, make another sentence, then you can make truth, truthful fragments in single sentences. But if you combine the sentences, there might be like a big lie. So if you write the sentences like separately, maybe three words per page or something, then you can tell lies like that. So yeah, they easily sneak in, but then um, the king discovers them. So Sai is out here just throwing out her magic abilities to attack all the grunts. And then Elena stops the king, she breaks the sword. And then she tells the king, hey, even though everyone can tell the truth, that doesn't make the country better. If people are scared of each other and don't wanna talk and it's just like creating a toxic environment, then that's not even good. And also lying, like making a little white lie here and there, it's beneficial. It allows people to interact with each other more genuinely. So yeah, now lies are okay. Everyone's kind of happy. They can actually talk now. And then the country is restored. Ahemia is uh, back inside the uh, palace. So she's like working with the king. And now, uh, yeah, everything's uh, resolved. No, no twists and turns, no darkness, just... Um, a happy ending there. Saya and Elena have to leave and they have to go their um, parting ways. So Saya is really sad, but then she gives Elena a matching necklace. So then yeah, they have these uh, matching moon necklaces. And then uh, Saya introduces the pinky promise to Elena, which is a sacred ritual in her country. They promise to meet again. Okay, so for high Q to the top, season two, episode six. We continue with the tournament with Karasno and Inarizaki. Uh, the score is 14 to 7, so Inarizaki's pretty stacked on the second matchup. The pro setter with the blonde hair, he's uh, up to serve, and then he makes two service aces, and he targets the libero, uh, Nishinoya. So Nishinoya's not used to being targeted since he's really good at cleaning up balls, but then the fact that this guy is uh, so good at serving makes uh, Nishinoya a little uh, dejected, and, and they take control of the momentum. And then yeah, it's uh, basically just a, a clinic by Inarizaki. Uh, the ace, Aron, just like has a lot of strong serves. There's also a dude, Rintaro, who's really good at um, baiting the blockers. He makes it look like he's trying to do something, but he fakes and uh, does a different shot. So yeah, Inarizaki is doing pretty well. Karasuno also makes like a, a big comeback though. So Kageyama does a lot of cool shit. He um, carries a lot. Inarizaki subs in the white-haired dude with, with white and black hair combined, so 
Yeah, he looks very intimidating. We shall see what he brings to the table for Inarizaki. Okay, so for the day I became a god, episode 5. It's a pretty sad episode, this one. We find out that Iz Izanami and her dad, their mom died 10 years ago, and the dad is basically a shut-in. He doesn't want to leave his house. And Izanami also is, like, really depressed since that time. And yeah, she reveals it to Yota in the library. And she also stays in the library ever since her mom died because it's like an escape. So Yota and Odin hatch a plan to bring Izanami out of her shell. So they first go to her house to talk to her dad, try to get him out and talk to him. So the dad reveals that the mom had these videos that she took and to show them when she died. The thing is the dad doesn't really want to watch the videos. So that's like a, a point that Yota picks up on and he talks to Izanami and he tells her that they have a phone and this phone lets you talk to the dead. So it's basically Odin on the other end of the phone but uh, magically manipulating her voice so she sounds like Izanami's mom. Yeah, she talks. It's like a very um, emotional moment because it's like she's all happy and cheerful saying. She's like, are you doing well? Don't be so mean to boys. Make sure you're social. Just like all the happy mom stuff. Izanami finds out there are videos of her that she took, and, but then her dad was hiding them from her. So she goes ask her dad, let's watch them together. The dad is really in pain because he doesn't want to watch them. He watches a section of the video over and over, but he never watches the video the whole way through. So now he decides to watch it with his daughter. It's very painful because in one moment, uh, Izanami's mom says, when you finish watching this video from start to finish, you will forget me and destroy these videos. He doesn't want to do that. They persevere through all the emotional tension and Izanami's mom in the video at the end, she's like in a hospital bed and she's like, I'm going to cast a spell on you and this magic spell will have you forget about me, live your lives and destroy these videos. They still think about her, but then Izanami realizes, yes, they have to move on. This is her mom's wish. And yeah, the ending has kind of some... Uh, silhouettes of um, Izanami when she was younger and her mom. They look very similar, uh, just blue-haired anime girls. This is an emotional episode. It wasn't the hard-hitting episode 12 emotion that I expect that we're gonna have. A uh, solid uh, Izanami story right there. And we have 11 days till the end of the world. Okay, so for Sports Climbing Girls, episode 6. Yeah, so Konomi just flexes hard in this episode. Uh, we start off with the Black Panther lady. She just doesn't want to lose. Um, all the girls are there, uh, ready for the semifinals. Nonaka is a cheerleader now. She's wearing like this bandage outfit, so that's her cheerleading outfit. Pretty cute. Um, there's a bunch of spectators. There's a cool Kurisu up there, and then the and the creepy sports climbing shop lady as well. So yeah, the semifinals format is a conveyor belt type of uh, showing where there's four walls and. One person climbs the first wall, and then they climb the next wall, and then the next person in line climbs it in that order. So then um, the other girls are in the back room, so they can't really analyze what technique to use. They have to figure it out on the spot. They can't just spectate. They have to actually figure it out in five minutes, and then they have five minutes of rest. So Konomi just goes ham. She climbs it in one shot, all three walls. Uh, there's a fourth wall that she doesn't finish yet. But she just analyzes it so quickly, and then this is how OP she is. This is where her skill comes through. So even though her body isn't fully ready, just her mind is just really strong. The other girls fail. We see the girl Nijima, who is like a zombie climber. Every time she climbs, she falls, but then she climbs higher each time. So that's her gimmick. She'll fall, but she can try again and again to climb higher. And then, yeah, the ballerina girl also fails a bit. So Konomi is on top right now. So very impressive showing for her. And yeah, we will see as the semi-final goes on, the other girls. I got points on the spider lady, Chinari. I'll, I want to see how she does. Okay, so for Tony Kaku Kawaii, episode 6, we have Nasa thinking to himself, hey, maybe we should get a bigger house. Because this not even one bedroom apartment is just like not cutting it. We can't sleep um, properly. We're just like too close, too much privacy. Like Nasa walks into Tsukasa changing, stuff like that. And then uh, Tsukasa admits that she likes being close to Nasa, but yeah, it'd be nice to have like double bed and actually being like a real couple, like having a, a movie theater in their house and an actual shower. So the process of getting a new apartment, you need a co-signer. I guess guarantee that you're gonna pay. So then the co-signer for Nasa's old apartment is his mother, so um, to get a new one, he has to introduce his mom to Tsukasa so she can agree on the co-sign. 
And then, yeah, he hits her up with the, uh, oh, yeah, we j I just got married to this cute girl. And his mom is, like, very happy and wants to meet her. And then, yeah, his parents live somewhere far away. I think it's called Nara. And apparently Nara is, like, a good honeymoon spot. So, yeah, while they're going from Tokyo to Nara, they can also have a real honeymoon and enjoy each other's company. So, yeah, a um, romantic getaway by them. And they take the bus to Nara. They take the bus to Kyoto. Sukasa sleeps really well on the bus. And also they're being stalked by Chitose. So she's very angry that they're, they're gonna meet the parents and they're actually gonna go on like some pseudo honeymoon. So yeah, there's that. We shall see what evil plans Chitose, aka Chika, is scheming. Oh yeah, also they get a camera. And Sukasa wants his camera just to take pictures of NASA. This camera is setting up for some emotional foreshadowing that we might see in the future. Okay, so for Higurashi, When They Cry, episode 6. Yeah, we are in a new timeline again. This is the uh, Shion path, I guess. Uh, Mian Shion. So here, Shion kind of makes her move on Keiichi. She's very attracted to him. She teases him, and she teases Shion as well. And she teases Mian as well, because Mian is very shy about it, but Shion is very aggressive about it. So yeah, they hang out together, etc. We also meet this blonde lady. It was the same blonde lady that was missing in the Rena timeline. So that blonde lady is the town doctor, Takano. So yeah, they're in the Watanagashi festival and this episode ends with Keiichi just getting lured into the storehouse by Takano, uh, the photographer, and Shion. Yeah, Keiichi just walking into this uh, building that might have cursed like demons inside of it or some shit and yeah, it seems, to, it seems to be like they're luring him there. I bet Mion saves him or something, but I don't know. Okay, so for Don Machi episode 6, we get some more story about the about the Ikelos Familia. And besides that, it was just kind of like a generic, oh, evil monsters that are angry and about trying to rescue them. So yeah, the stuff we learn is that Daedalus, he's part of the Ikelos Familia. And he's a dude that's like pretty smart. He's a genius, you could say. And his mind was just blown when he saw the dungeon. Like he thought the dungeon was amazing. There's this monster spawning like thousands of floors or whatever. He wants to make his own man-made dungeon called Nosos. So yeah, that's just the motivation of the Ikelos Familia. So then um, when he died, he like left this uh, plan to the rest of the Familia to follow. So yeah, basically making the dungeon takes a lot of manpower and money, so that's why they're selling monsters, just for money. Also, they enjoy torturing monsters, but yeah, that's another reason. So actual story about the Ikelos Familia, uh, pretty cool. Uh, one complaint I do have with this season is just the pacing is so fast. I don't know if it's intentional. It's not like terrible pacing, but it's just like, damn, like slow down a bit. We're learning so much, yet like I, I can't get invested too much if it's going this fast. Okay, so for No Bless Episode 5, this uh, episode is a bit generic, but it, w it had some cool fights. Basically, Shark is um, acting all evil and be beating up on Shin Wu. Ryu just tries to break free of his chains. M21 is just sitting there in conflict, but then yeah, he decides to it's time to attack, so he attacks Shark. Shark uses the D drug to make himself stronger. And also, Karen uses D, so D is like their super drug that makes him stronger. And then he he kills Shark and absorbs Shark's power. So Kranz, who is supposed to be like the leader, is like actually just trying to absorb the power of his underlings to just make himself stronger. And yeah, uh, the episode ends with just Rai coming in and everyone's just quiet. We don't know what Rai's gonna do, but next episode he'll probably show off his skills. Uh, the thing about this anime that um, I'm kind of iffy about is just how is how hard the power scaling is defined. Like. It's obvious that Rai is on the top, which, I mean, I guess he should be. He's the main, he's the face of the show, I guess. Um, the experiments are, like, in the middle with all the other uh, vampire stuff from the Union. So, yeah, they're strong, but they're not stronger than the Noblesse, so they have to actually, like, take drugs and shit to get stronger. So, it's like, you know, I don't, I don't think relying on drugs makes a good villain, but whatever. It's just, like, it, now that it's established that Rai is that strong, it's kind of weird to see these fights knowing that he's gonna just rescue everyone but it's not that bad because they do have counters to the noblesse they have like a ways to suppress their abilities so that's there also there's there's some cool fights with frankenstein and the purple haired dude and uh sarah and hammer so yeah nice fights just uh 
Okay, so for Yasuhime, episode 6. This episode is very random. Just um, the girls have to defeat this cat demon. And there's just a bunch of evil cats that are possessing the townspeople. I guess I want to stop watching the Monster of the Week episodes and just get to the actual plot with girls and the like top class demons that they have to fight. 